let's get started, okay? Um, let's reflect a little bit as to what has been going on as of late, because I believe by looking back, we have a better perspective on what's going to happen moving forward. So, look, it's no secret what's been happening to the debt market, the 10-year yield, more specifically over the past several weeks. Let's, let's talk about that. I have explained to all of you for a while now that the market is pricing in a Fed rate hike. How do we know that's true? Or is Greg just making this up out of like thin air, you know, kind of like the Federal Reserve, how they create cash out of thin air? No. There are always tell tale signs as to what is going on if you just know where to look okay if you have observed action in the 10-year yield why the 10-year yield people ask me that all the time because the 10-year yield is the benchmark it's the one everybody watches okay and it's just a critical piece of uh, uh, information that we can gather by observing simply the 10-year freaking yield. Okay, so what's been going on? The market has been, in my view, again, pricing in a rate hike for a while. We've watched the 10-year yield rise. On the back of that, we have seen the stock market fall under some pressure. Okay, these things work. It, it is a very, very close relationship with the 10-year yield and the stock market. They're not in lockstep, but they're very close, okay? I've covered this before a million times. So anyway, on the back of the 10-year yield rising over the past several weeks and last week, well, that was epic. We'll talk about that in a moment. We've seen the stock market fall under pressure, more specifically the tech sector. I have covered again a million times how tech stocks are very rate sensitive. So we have seen a, an overreaction, and I covered this to the point of nauseam with regard to the tech sector. I told you we witnessed an overreaction, and there was a buying opportunity there, and that has played out to be exactly right. This is not rocket science, people. Okay, so on the back of this market pricing in a rate hike, March. March is my target. Yes, I was wrong about the last one. Okay, I know a lot of you like to hear me admit when I am wrong. I am not right all the time. Okay, I think you all know that. But for the most part, well, you tell me. Okay, so with that said, we have this overreaction in the tech sector, which has been amazing, an amazing opportunity to get in here cheap. Um, we've also witnessed a nice, nice, nice drop with the banks, which I've been buying for a long time. I've been advocating for my lions to buy for a very, very long time. This has been a gift, a gift to all of us. And I think my lions out here would agree. And you know which banks these are. I've been telling you, I've been putting this out in my free newsletter, link in the description of this video. So if you have not yet subscribed, what are you freaking waiting for? Okay, it's free, I'm not kidding. All right, anyway, with that said, so, Again, this, this movement here in the 10-year yield has obviously been reflected in the movement of the stock market. The Fed didn't do anything with the uh, federal funds rate or raising rates. And what did that do? That initially hit the stock market. I mean, duh, we all knew that was coming. And you know, it has rebounded since the market's now going, hold on a minute now. The economy is cratering. I mean, clearly, we'll talk more about that in a moment. It's not going to stop. Net, net, every freaking month, we are losing jobs. But you said, I'm not supposed to know that. You see, the propaganda ministry has been paid to lie to you. Okay, whatever. Um, we still know what the opportunities are, period, the freaking end. Last week, we watched the 10-year yield spike, and I told you that was a yellow flag. That yellow flag is not gone. It's still there. The 10-year yield right now is sitting at 1.91. Moving into next week, tomorrow, we are going to see if this yellow flag turns red. And the market will reflect that, people, Period. The end. Okay. Very, very simple. So keep your eye on that 10 year yield. I will tell you every day, believe me, I will be watching the yield curve, the 10 year yield, the MMRI, which you can watch yourself 
uh, on my website, traderschoice.net. Again, link in the lovely description of this video. And it has moved up substantially. Now, look, let's talk about that real quick. When we're looking at risk in the market, it, it's a double-edged sword. The more risk there is, well, the more potential gains we can make, also potential losses. So we just have to sit back here and assess the entire situation. We can't just look in one spot. Again, that's what makes what I do complicated, all right? It's like a balancing act. I, I, in, I put together a, <laughs> an incredible amount of information, all right? I, I assimilate it. I then come up with what I believe are the most likely scenarios. And for the most part, again, I'll let you all be the judge. How have I done with this? Well, pretty damn good, huh? Okay. Anyway, I'm just, look, again, not tooting my own horn. This is our thing, you know, not just Greg Manorino's. And I feel a sincere responsibility to all of you to at least get it right the vast majority of the time. And I think I do that. All right. So anyway, look, like I said, we are not out of the woods here. We need to watch that 10-year yield. I can't stress that enough. We need to watch the MMRI. More risk could potentially mean more reward. Could also mean potentially more losses. But again, we're, we're going we're gonna to figure this out as we move forward. So anyway, let, let us move forward here with uh, what's happening so we can best gauge what we should be doing. Um, let, me, let me just say this while we're out here. I believe the market, this is the most likely scenario moving into next week. I believe that without an outlying event, we should see the 10-year yield at least stabilize. What does that mean? If the 10-year yield stabilizes even where it is, the stock market is going higher. All right. If we see the 10-year yield knee-jerk higher, well, that's not good. The market's not going to like it. If the 10-year yield drops a little bit and the Dixie or the relative strength of the dollar comes down, that's very good. That's very, very good for the stock market. Okay. But Let's forget the stock market for a minute and, and let us, again, move move forward to a few things here. I've explained to you, and I, I made a, a um, I said something wrong the other day. I had said that, well, actually it's not wrong, but the context was kind of out of place. I have been saying to you that we, right now, coming right at us from every single direction is another wave, a tsunami of inflation i used the debt the other day but that's coming too i mean so it wasn't really wrong uh if you believe that we have seen you know peak debt well uh you're out of your freaking mind we aren't even close to peak debt which means we're not even close to peak inflation so these things do play right into each other central banks have gone wild gone wild in their mission here to to own it all and you all know that so anyway, yes, uh, this uh, I said actually a super tsunami of inflation is coming at us from every direction. And it's not, not by accident, number one. And it's unstoppable. There's no way to stop it. Nor does a central bank, especially the Fed, want to stop it. Again, what have I said to you since time immemorial? Central banks want to inflate inflate and then inflate some more. The more a central bank, any central bank is allowed to inflate or called upon to inflate or called upon to weaken the currency or called upon to push rates negative, well, the stronger they become, the stronger they become. Uh, this concept seems to have gotten lost with a lot of people. And they don't understand what's going on. They don't understand they have no representation. I don't care what puppet they put sitting behind the Resolute Desk. It doesn't matter. Our last president, Trump, you know, the one that a lot of people like to lick his feet. A lot of people like to lick the current president's feet too, President Retard. But he was calling for a weaker dollar. He, Trump, was calling for negative rates. What would that do? That would make central banks, the Fed, even stronger. Do you think that guy worked for you too? doesn't matter who they put in there. Your vote don't count. <laughs> if you think it does, well, wow. You know, nothing is what it seems to be. Let us move forward here. People, 